Good morning and welcome to the CAVE webinar for Wednesday the 10th of June. Today we're going to be looking at Moby's educational pathway and train the trainer modules with Jerry Ruffles. My name is Jordan and I'm the Regional Services Administrator here at CAVE. We do like to make our webinars interactive so we do encourage you to send through any questions that you have throughout the presentation and we will look through these at the end with a short Q&A session. Um, so there are many different ways you can send us your questions. You can do so with the control panel that is on your screen. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, um, you can send any questions through to info at cbuildy.com or you can tweet us using the hashtag CAVECPD. So your speaker for this morning is Jerry Ruffles. He is Head of Education for Moby with responsibility for their education pathways, further and higher education courses, CPD training programmes and designing and running the student challenges. He has been with Moby since its inception in 2017. Before Moby, his career in higher education spanned over 25 years lecturing, writing and running courses in construction in the built environment, design and architecture and building services. He has served as an external examiner for various colleges and universities and been a BTEC and higher nationals writer with Pearson. After a degree in industrial design at Northumbria University, Jerry worked in product, furniture and interior design in both private and public sectors before establishing a design and build company delivering new builds, conversions, restorations, design and project management. Whilst practicing as a designer, he gained membership of the Chartered Society of Designers and for several years was the chair of the Northeast region of the CSD and later chair of the society's regional board. He lives in rural Northeast England with his wife, an artist and family nearby. Jerry is a keen supporter of Sunderland Football Club and spends his spare time running and walking over the local hills and moors. If you give me just a couple of seconds, I will hand over to Jerry and he will take you through this morning's presentation. Good morning, and thanks very much for that introduction, um, uh, Jordan. Um, and thank you for joining. Um, it is a bit of an early start, so I do appreciate those of you who have uh, who have made the effort. Um, as Jordan just said, I'm 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 here this morning to, to really to talk a little bit about um, <coughs> Moby, the Ministry of Building Innovation and Education, um, why we were set up, uh, what we do, what we're trying to do. And, uh, and then uh, talk about the off-site ready project that we've been partnered uh, with partners with, um, which is funded by the CITB, um, to produce uh, training material and modules um, to help people who are delivering training, whether it's in education or in industry, um, to deliver materials around um, off-site uh, manufacturing, off-site off manufacturing, and um, modern methods of, of construction. And as I said, thank you for joining so early, and I, I, I hope this is interesting and worthwhile for you. Um, George Clark, uh, TV presenter, writer, um, <clears throat> and architect, is the founder of Moby. Um, he is um, absolutely passionate about home, every aspect of home, um, the design of homes, uh, the lack of homes, the quality of homes, uh, social housing, homelessness, um, and as he says here, when he set Moby up, home is the most important piece of architecture in our lives. It crafts the way we live, how we grow as families and communities. A well-designed home can enhance the way we live and promote our well-being. And never is that more true than at the moment, obviously, when we're all kind of locked down and, and isolated um, in our homes. <laughs> so as, uh, as John just said, I'm Jerry Ruffles, head of education. You know, you know that bit. But um, I'm not quite sure how much many of you know about um, Moby. Um, it, was, it was set up by George Clark in 2017, um, and he was 
very, very aware of the problems around the home construction industry, the way we build homes, the way we don't build homes, um, the lack of homes, um, and, and possibly more particularly, um, we're not really engaging with young people, or at least we weren't engaging with young people at schools and colleges to try try to attract them into the uh, into the design um, construction industry. It wasn't seen as a particularly attractive career option. So that's why he really kind of set up Moby um, and, and, estab and established this. Um, now, hopefully, this thing will work. He set up the. Uh, the Moby team, um, which consists of obviously himself, uh, the far as, as, as the founder. Um, we've got a board of trustees, um, which is headed by John Mathers, um, who was um, head of the design council. So um, <clears throat> again, a pretty uh, prestigious background. We've got Mary Parsons, who's um, a board director for um, the Social Housing Association Place for People. Um, Mark Farmer, who hopefully you will know probably through um, Modernize or Die, the Farmer Report, but he, he, he's now one of our trustees and obviously co-founder of Cast Consultancy. Uh, we have myself um, and we have Mark Southgate, um, who is the, the, the chief executive of Mori. So we are a fairly small team. Um, we've recently just got a, a, a new member. Um, uh, we've recently got a new member of the trustees board, um, Steve Quartermain, CB, who has just retired from the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government um, as a chief was chief planner with them. So Moby is very small, and to a certain extent, we do kind of punch way above our weight. Um, so really, you know, to recap that bit, um, Moby is educational charity, um, and we're here to promote innovation, the design and delivery of, of homes, um, and really to inspire the future creators of the built environment um, through a whole range of um, schools and colleges engagements, student competitions and challenges, and technical vocational courses. And over the last three years, we've um, we've managed to develop quite a, what we like to think is a unique uh, educational pathway um, from schools engagement um, through into further education, higher education, um, all the way up to um, <coughs> doctoral research, PhD programs, and um, really what we're really about is um, promoting um, skills and modern methods of construction. Off-site manufacturing, which we kind of think is the future for homes and, and the construction industry, digital competencies, and, and looking at, at new sustainable um, uh, materials. And um, for all our hard work, we're proud to say that last autumn um, we were the winners of the uh, Best Skills and Training um, Award at the Building Innovation Awards, uh, which was which was very very nice indeed. Um, it kind of started off in many ways with looking at the industry's problem. Um, basically, the perception of the construction industry to young people, uh, it, it doesn't look a particularly appealing um, industry to want to join. To join. I mean, is this an attractive career option um, for young people? You're looking at uh, cold, wet, miserable construction sites, not very pleasant conditions. It's um, you know, it's muddy and it's not at all pleasant. Um, and really, we're, we're still building houses um, where we have been for hundreds and hundreds of years. Other industries, the automotive industry, the IT industry, every other industry is uh, leapt along in leaps and bounds. And you know, here we are in the home building, house construction industry, um, plugging your way with mixing up sands and cement. And it, it's, it's not particularly appealing. Um, it's not seen as an attractive option for young people to join, which it should be because it, you know, it can be such an incredibly exciting, incredibly rewarding uh, career option. And you're very, very early on in your career. Um, if you get you know, taken on by a house builder or in construction, you get an awful lot of responsibility. Um, and uh, it, it kind of basically it, it needs promoting. And, and so often going along to schools, talking to teachers, careers uh, advice, um, that this, these images here, really, this is their image of the construction industry. And, it, um, and, and, and we're not attracting enough young people at the moment. 
Um, we need um, something like 400,000 recruits every year. Um, there are currently only about 19,000 active apprenticeship, apprentices in construction, um, and the success or completion rate is just over 50%. It's, it's, it, it, it hasn't been that good, um, and we are the, the the workforce in the construction industry is diminishing as people age and retire and leave, not attracting enough young people. Um, so that's the problem. And, uh, and I've just been saying really, it's not seen as, it hasn't been seen as attractive. Um, and it's kind of got these little things that it's outdoors, it's cold, it's wet, it's physical, it's repetitive work, it's manual work, it's poorly paid and it's not for girls. And those things are so strictly not true. A um, few years ago, um, Mark Farmer um, set out his government report, the Farmer Review of the UK Construction Labour Model, which was a pretty damning um, account of, uh, of the way we were. Um, it was entitled to Modernise or Die. Um, probably, hopefully, you are, are aware of this. Um, and he said it best, really. Um, when he looked at the problem, um, summarising the fact that the year was <laughs> low productivity, um, it, the, the, the structure of the industry is fragmented, very fragmented, um, low margins, um, workforce size is a problem, as I say, it's, it, it's diminishing, um, low predictability, the leadership, there's dysfunctional delivery, uh, the lack of cooperation, um, has a very poor image, and possibly the most important thing is has a complete lack or a very, very limited amount of research and development go, goes into it. Um, and, and as I said earlier, we're now quite, uh, we're delighted that Mark Farmer has, um, has joined Moby as a, as a, as a trustee member. Um, now, I see there's a problem moving to the next slide. There we are. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, and again, one of the other the, the problems was with new houses, um, everything looks the same, really. I mean, is this really the best we can do? New new houses across the country, whether you're in the north, east, south, or west, they all look the same. Um, and is that necessary? You know, is this the best we can do? There's no innovation, really. There's no quality. We hear you buy a new home um, from one of the house builders, whoever it might be, and you get a snagging list as, as long as you're um, um, and you expect them to be coming back you know, for the next six months or so to fix things. Um, so the quality is poor, no sense of community, um, no place making, no ecology, all the things which Moby uh, you know, want to put right. And really, um, we're just wondering what would a housing estate look like if these guys had um, designed and built it? Jonathan Ives from Apple, um, James Dyson, Tom Bloxham, uh, founder of uh, Urban Splash. Um, what, would it, what, what would these guys come up with a new house um, if they were to design it? And the one thing you can probably be certain on is that it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be built and it wouldn't look like this. Um, this graph here kind of it, it shows where where we're possibly at um, over the years. If you look back to 1970, um, in this country we were we were building something like 350,000 homes a year, a mix between local authority social uh, local authority council houses and the private houses were very very equal, much for muchness. 50-50 um, in the housing associations were built, were, were built, um, were, weren't building that, that many. And it's gradually declined. <coughs> and, and until sort of um, early in this century, more or less local authority council housing stopped and died a death completely. Housing associations of um, building a few more and private housing associations. But you know, our, our target of, of building all these hundreds of thousands of homes a year has, you know, we're only reaching about half the target. So you know, it's just quite a, it's quite a, um, uh, it's quite a, a, a problem, obviously. Um, or getting around the problem of, of building 
the, and meeting the target of, of 300,000 homes a year. Um, we've got to look to the future of um, how we can build houses. We can't keep on building houses with sand and cement and bricks and blocks. It's not sustainable. It's not environmentally um, friendly to the planet. It's slow. Um, and it's expensive. Um, and perhaps we should be looking um, at modular homes, off-site manufacturing. And this is probably going to be the future. And is this the direction of you know, Moby's courses are probably probably looking at modern methods of construction, off-site construction. Um, and an increasing number of firms are getting on board with this. We've got Barclay Homes, um, Ilka Homes. Um, in North Yorkshire, Lidl in general, their their, their big um, plant in, in Selby, and 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 of course Urban Splash. I mean, it's not necessarily the ideal answer, but um, it is an answer. And and in, in, in embracing digital technologies, and um, we should be able to improve the quality and the affordability and the sustainable sustainability um, of our homes. So these are. The firms that are probably kind of leading the way um, <coughs> and kind of a bit of a headline of di different articles in the guardian and different papers saying that you know is modular homes is it the future can factory homes solve the housing crisis and so on and so forth um and again ian mccallum of, ja of jaguar um, <coughs> we perhaps should be building these homes in factories we could have an awful lot to learn from the automotive industry um the way jaguar and land rover building cars um, the way Nissan um, in Sunderland are building cars, clean, efficient factory units um, with great kind of working conditions. Um, and whilst they're churning out mass producing cars, you can still go in there and you can you go in there, but you can pick the colors and the finishing of, of your car and, and kind of create your own specification, which is something which isn't really happening with, with, with modern houses at the moment. So I think we've got a lot to learn from the automotive industry. Um, this again a bit of a depressing sorry about this um kind of graph shows that the built environment sector is is really kind of struggling a bit behind the rest the rest of industry really um most industries have kind of embraced modern technologies and, and so on and so forth if you think of this graph you know way way back in 1400s we were running pretty parallel bent to the printing press and then the telescope and the steam engine the industrial revolution um and and then um the rest of industry zoomed ahead really you know 1960 put a man on the moon microprocessors um windows was invented mobile phones were invented zvds facebook youtube um all this sort of thing, the, the industry zoomed, zoomed ahead, but the poor old built environment sector stayed very much as it was. Um, and at, the, at least it is now um, starting to starting to climb. Um, so Moby set out on its educational pathway, and whilst we our first course that we did develop was an MSc, a Master's um, in Advanced Home Futures at Teesside University. And we're, we're very grateful to Teesside University for um, assisting us to develop our, our, our first course. Um, <clears throat> um, but, you know, it's probably more or less at the top of the chain. Um, starting at the bottom, we're very, very keen to engage young people. We can get young people engaged in thinking about homes, thinking about design as a career option. Well, that's great because um, you can have brilliant degree courses and what have you, but if the, um, if the kids aren't at school wanting, wanting to go to courses and colleges and universities to do um, design, and then you know, you're wasting time there anyway. So we do a lot of, a lot of schools engagement, um, a lot of it around competitions, design challenges, and, and young people who never fails to amaze us just how talented and creative and passionate young people are about, um, about homes and about designs, um, and of course their ability to, to use IT and, um, uh, and to de design with. So trying to get out there into, into, into schools to get people engaged um, and thinking about careers in design and, and not thinking of it as this that you know cold awful site where the people who aren't terribly academically clever uh, end up going and that it can be an incredibly exciting um a very rewarding career for for, for boys and, and girls so from schools at the bottom at that level three um we worked with pearson 
um, was at Excel Pearson and education providers, um, and we've written uh, modern methods of construction offsite manufacturing units um, to accompany their construction in, in the built environment. Um, for those of you who aren't kind of familiar with the way BTEC Level 3 courses work, the BTEC Level 3 um, diploma is the, is the vocational equivalent, equivalent to um, two or three A levels. Um, it probably hasn't got the academic recognition that A levels have, um, but nevertheless, a, a well-run BTEC course is an excellent, um, an excellent start. And in fact, George Clark, um, he himself um, did a, um, a BTEC um, when he left school. Um, so he's great support of the BTEC, um, the BTEC system. So we have the BTEC colleges and the courses. Um, and the, the way it works, you, you have about 12 units, 12 modules, of which half a dozen of them are core units looking across the board at construction, technology and science and building services and so on and so forth. And then um, you have about half a dozen um, specialist units, depending on what kind of route you want to go down. And so um, Mo Moby has our, have specialist units, which colleges cannot to deliver. From the BTEC Level 3, you can progress to um, HNC, Higher National Certificate, um, and we, again, with Pearson, um, Pearson are the largest probably education providers uh, probably in the world now would think, yeah, we've developed future homes design and construction, which again is very, very similar, built upon the Level 4 HNC construction of the built environment, which is the traditional uh, vocational HNC route. Um, and again, to try to appeal um, appeal to all industries, all employers who are sending um, students part-time day release, which is a kind of the traditional route of the BTEC HNC uh, method. We've got six of the core units, six of the traditional units for the HNC. Um, so you're getting a traditional grounding in construction at, at um, HNC level. And then we have uh, six specialist units. So usually kind of in, the, in the, maybe in the second year or the second half of an HNC, you pick the specialist units, whether you want to go down a building services route, an architectural technology route, civil engineering route, um, project management route. Um, this is where we have our future homes design and construction. Um, if anybody is uh, looking on the Excel Pearson website under their high nationals to get the specification, for our HNC, um, because it's called Future Homes, it comes under F, um, and we get other people saying, we can't find your course because they're looking at a construction or building or architecture or design. Um, so there we are, it's under F, Future. Um, from the level four, you can progress to um, uh, a level five, a top up from the HNC, more or less the HNC, HND, High National Diploma, is um, a almost a repeat of the units you'd have studied at um, HNC level, but it, um, it's at high level. So really, instead of just doing BIM, you do advanced BIM. Instead of doing um, modern methods of construction, it's advanced modern methods of construction. From the degree, sorry, from the HNC level fours and level fives, you can progress either uh, stop there and say thank you very much and go into employment, or you can uh, obviously progress to a degree. Um, a lot of the com a lot of companies who are sending their students a day release um, to do an HNC or an HND, and I think most colleges kind of some of them do it full time um, over one year for an HNC, some do it part time on a one day release. <clears throat> we, we kind of now um, hopefully mapped that our future homes design and construction um, HNC um, to a levy standard so that companies um, who do want to um, send their apprentices, uh, their employees to do an HNC at, at one of our colleges um, should be claim the fees back by the levy. Um, at degree level, we've now got a BA at Birmingham City University entitled Design for Future Living. Um, we've got a, a BSc at Teesside University called Innovative Home Design and Construction. <coughs> uh, and we have an, a master's degrees, again, um, at Teesside University, which we say was our first our first university, um, and we've we've now got a um, off-site home construction um, degree at University of Wolverhampton, which is a distance learning course, um, which which is great. I mean, it is possible in the future for a lot of courses, particularly now when you can't attend universities. But it's a distance learning, so that you can uh, doesn't really matter whether you're studying it from Sunderland or Singapore. Um, 
and we are currently um, developing a, a trail. We have a set of a trailblazer team. We're actually developing a, um, a, a trailblazer at level seven with, in fact, CAVE, um, with, uh, with CAVE, with the CIOB, with the RICS, um, to develop a, a levy standard so that um, hopefully, hopefully, it'd be nice to think, not this year, but the next year, um, any company who want to send employees to study um, an MSc in, a, in an off-site construction um, at the moment at the University of Wolverhampton, but once we get the standard approved, um, it will apply to our other MSCs as well. You're going to use the levy funding to, to finance the fees, so which, is, which is going to be great. And we're proud to say that um, the uh, Mark, Mark Farmer has um, has agreed to chair our Trailblazer team. And um, with the team we've got, um, we're hoping we can get this standard approved relatively quickly. And at the top of the table at, uh, at level eight, um, we have a PhD program at Northumbria University. We've set up a Homes for the Future Innovation Centre, and they've got funding for um, 15 PhDs over the next five, over the next three years. So that's five a year. Um, and any company that's got an idea for a research project um, in uh, um, obviously future homes, um, there is funding available um, to, to fund a PhD with all the incredible resources and facilities they've got at Northumbria. So it's a very exciting educational pathway. Um, the Moby course topics, and all kind of the, the areas that we kind of have units in, whether it's at a BTEC or HNC or a degree and master's degree. Um, obviously we're very interested in digital design, technology, BIM, um, building information modeling, modern methods of construction, offsite construction, uh, materials, new materials, alternative materials, sustainable materials, manufacturing product processes, services, um, future thinking houses, obviously very, very important, that would combine with future thinking technologies, uh, green renewable energies, um, project management, obviously. Um, Quite a bit of emphasis on on presentation, how you did not only obviously design, but how you would present um, your projects, and of course building the economics. Um, last year, we had our first graduates from our first our first course graduated our first MSc in Home and Advanced Home Futures um, from Teesside University, and the, the first cohort graduated last. Um, August, I think there was 15 on the course. And again, really interesting because, you know, we're trying to be innovative, we're trying to look to the future. And I think out of the 15 on the course, 10 or 11 were females, um, which says a great deal about the future of attracting people into, into the industry. Um, and within a very few weeks of the course finishing, um, just about every one of those students that were seeking employment um, got jobs um, and not just uh, ordinary jobs where they were taken on by uh, places for people, um, Urban Splash, I believe, um, Barclay Homes, Ilka Homes. Um, so we were obviously doing something right. Um, and we had a, we had a splendid um, degree show um, event. And because it was the very, very, uh, <clears throat> because it was the very first Moby course, um, the graduating students were given a nice signed certificate saying they joined the Moby community as, as the first, um, core, the first uh, students to graduate. And one of the beauties of this course um, was the fact that, you know, we, we, it was, it's all project, all our courses are very much project based, live project based. Um, and we were trying to bring in um, practicing part time lecturers, in, innovative, exciting um, lecturers. Um, and a couple of them actually on this course were indeed product designers, industrial designers to deliver um, future thinking houses, future thinking technology. So it wasn't purely, although most of the students on the course were um, from an architectural background. Um, and it was it was great. We had uh, one of the, one, one of the one of the females on the course gave up a, a job in Los Angeles to come all the way to Middlesbrough. I think it would have been a bit of a culture shock to her when she got here, but she came all the way from um, Los Angeles to do this course. So excited to watch it by the prospect of it. Um, and likewise, another girl who was a model maker, incredible model maker, and architect's um, office in Singapore. Um, again. A bit of a shock when she first came to Teesside, although she was impressed at how cheap the accommodation was. Um, but yeah, so that's a you know it's an attractive course, and, and it's going obviously again this year. Um, 
um, albeit um, the final projects are being worked on at home at the moment. Um, again, this is a, a quick image of um, some of the graduates, or some of the, the students and their, their final models at the degree show. Um, so apart from courses, uh, We've, we've now run, I think, four, maybe even five design, student design challenges. Um, how do we design and make homes our kids will love when they grow up? That's always the theme. Um, uh, and we've, we've, run these we've run these student design competitions and challenges. Um, and it's a great way of engaging um, younger students. All our challenges have categories from kind of 11 year olds, 11 to kind of 14, and then the 14 to 16 bracket, and the 16 to 18 bracket, and those in FE, further education. And then we have um, the, 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 uh, the, the higher education students. Um, and part of our, our um, part of our role, uh, as we keep saying, we're keen to engage, engage with schools. Um, we get out of get out to schools as much as we can and colleges to help uh, deliver. One of the beauties of, of the Moby thing is we, we call upon quite a few contacts to deliver projects and seminars and, and this sort of thing. So we get out and engage with schools as much as we can, support our various challenges. Um, this one here is uh, this year, earlier this year, um, at the girls at Nottingham, uh, Nottingham Girls Academy um, and uh, the BTEC students at, at, at Harlow College. Um, so again, very much part of our mission in getting out and engaging with people. Um, finalists of our challenges, you know, perhaps there might be a, a cash prize to a certain extent, um, but we try to, you know, one of the incentives for our challenges um, is to give them experiences um, that they won't forget. Um, so this one here, I believe, is um, finalists from our, um, our challenge we did last year um, with we combined with deck design engineer construct and construct um, these were young um, 13 14 year olds from I think it was Western Fable school in Northampton um, they won their category and the, the project was to design uh, um, halls of residence new modular off-site manufactured halls of residence at Teesside University again a live project they were actually going to be building these halls of residence on an old uh, car park um, um, anyway, these 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 young group here were the winners of their age category, and one of the um, one of the prizes was to have a, a studio session, a workshop session with with George Clark, experience in here, which is you know a process for the, these young kids. Um, and one of the other prizes that um, or we have had now, we've done it twice for our young students that win these um, challenges in their age categories. It's not just um, a studio experience in a workshop with, with George and what have you. Um, we're very grateful to um, Grimshaw's Architects. Um, Grimshaw's Architects, one of the leading architects in, in, in the country, in the world probably, um, incredibly impressive um, offices and facilities there are atelier workshops down in Clerkenwell in, in London and they take the students down to London um, for a day to um, work with them I and mean, Grimshaw's take on um, quite a few graduate architects each year the creme de la creme of the universities in many ways um, and these young students are paired up with young architects um, for the day to see what they're doing and the fact that you know straight out of university they're they're given projects with you know, multi-million pound budgets um, and then they, they've spent some time in these incredible um, workshops that they've got there um, and some of our young people when they enter the challenges <clears throat> the models they make whilst they're beautiful and they're great and the passion is fantastic they're pretty basic models um, with you know cardboard toilet roll holders and um, this sort of thing. Um, but to have a day down at uh, the workshops where they can actually develop their, their winning designs um, with laser cutting and 3D printing and um, the facilities at, um, at uh, Grimshaw's is absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, they all say, you know, it's a day they won't forget. And the first time, the first winners of our first competition um, were the girls from Nottingham um girls academy here they are here um and again it was a um a, a modular um staff, staff accommodation for a school um sponsored by the mtc manufacturing technology center in Coventry. um and these were the overall winners um five 13 year old girls from nottingham um 
and they were just in incredible um, in their passion and commitment. And um, whilst some of the older students, the VTech agency degree students, whilst their designs were great and they were very, you know, they were very technically brilliant, um, they kind of got a bit bogged down with the constraints of um, would you get planning permission, would you get building regulation approval? Whereas these young girls had never heard of stuff like that. They just designed and they were so creative. Um, made it all the all, all, all the more impressive, really. Uh, they come from a, 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 a socially a deprived area of Nottingham, the wrong side of the tracks in many ways. Um, and it was an incredible adventure to come down to Coventry um, to present uh, in, front, in front of George and, and, and the judging panel, and then to actually be paid to go down and have a day in London at Clerkenwell at, at the Artillia workshops with Grimshaws was just incredible. A lot of the girls were actually in tears. They'd never ever been to London, and it coincided with Clerkenwell Design Week, and they just couldn't they just couldn't believe the, the atmosphere. And every single one of them wants to have a, a career in in, in design. Um, this last year, um, our challenge was <coughs> sponsored by um, this construction innovation hub, um, and it was to design um, homes um, around um, multi generational homes where um, the MTC and the construction innovation hub wanted to. Um, celebrate and, and work with their robotic arms to, to build homes um, robotically um, and we kind of the, the premise of the brief was to have um, steel cubes constructions um, three meters by three meters um, and it was going to be a home for generational living multi-generational living um, which you could add to as time went by. So when you first set up home, you would buy one pod or two pods and have a studio apartment. And then you could add other pods um, and units as the family grew. Um, and likewise, when you got older and wanted to downsize, you could remove some of the pods and the pods of the units, three by three meter units could go together in all sorts of um, combinations. Um, and even if you had your home and you wanted to move from Newcastle to Birmingham or something like that, you could dismantle the pods and, and move the pods with you. So again, the winners of this competition, um, the winners of this competition were um, BTEC students from um, Dudley College, um, and the prize of this really was apart from having a professional model made, um, <clears throat> the MTC actually robotically constructed a showcase prototype of their their winning design. I mean, you don't get much of a better prize or an incentive than that, um, which was uh, which was shown on a massive stand, which they um, they they put for us at the UK Construction Week. Um, so we've just finished um, we've just finished a, a competition um, with I um, mean in 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 collaboration and partnership with the Ministry of um, homes, communities, and local government, BRE and the RIBA. Um, we maybe were running the Young Persons Design Challenge, designing um, a home for 2030. And this is kind of running in parallel with the professional competition, the home of 2030. Um, obviously, we've um, produced a shortlist of various aging categories. Um, and we were going to hold regional semi-final events and heats and have a grand final presentation. Obviously, all that's been put on hold because of COVID. Um, and whilst the student experience of attending um, our webinars, sorry, web presentations and actually presenting their work at a major event in front of a, a, of a panel is such a tremendous experience. Rather than finally judging virtually, we want to um, we want to hold these event, uh, at some point in the future, so it's being put on hold. But what we're doing at the moment is um, each week we're highlighting, showcasing bits of the shortlist of designs um, from all the age categories uh, on our websites, the Homer 2030 website, um, as, as well as um, Instagram and, and Twitter. So these students are getting uh, a fair, fair bit of coverage. And just at the moment, on the moment, we're highlighting some work from these are 13 year old students from um, St Egbert School in Sheffield, um, where they're looking at. The, the, press, the, the, the brief for the home of 2030 um, was looking at really looking at um, uh, maybe how, how we should be building homes in the next 10 years, um, car, carbon neutral, um, new materials, new methods of construction, um, how we're dealing with an aging population, smart homes. 
Um, so these young 13 year olds came up with IH homes, affordable young, young homes with young families. Um, Elijah here was an open plan um, homes which were going to be purely heated by solar and this sort of thing. Um, Grace's work was expandable uh, family with uh, green roofs and so on and so forth. Um, high tech home, totally built out of recycled materials. Um, and Tilly's was uh, modern methods construction and diversity. So these were only 13, um, and we we're only highlighting bits of their work, which was, you know, um, it's extraordinary the, the, the ability um, and what they can do. You can see here some of their, their designs and their drawings. With 13 year olds, it's absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's just just uh, it's just kind of mind blowing. Um, we're also highlighting, uh, as I say, we're going through some some of the work from um, university students. This is a hot house from um, a, a team from um, Sheffield University, Sheffield Helen University, and um, again inc incredible standard of, of drawings. But uh, one of the teams was uh, was looking at um, social housing for single. Um, for single people, um, and this team, this this team was again, as I say, social housing for single single people. Um, incredibly interesting um, designs, and it's actually on a reclaimed site in 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 Nottingham. Um, so these are some of the, some of the shortlisted work again if you're interested in having really any more details of this it's it's on our they're on our website um ella rogers another one from um i think from, from nottingham was thinking old women's co-housing how um they could perhaps live together socially um in an urban in an urban area um and Rachel was in about sustainable urban farming, how you could live as a bit of a hippie commune, I suppose, in many ways. But there's coexisting um, sustainable homes um, where you could you could live together in a city centre, again, uh, on this derelict site in in, in Nottingham, um, where they could live, they would live together um, and grow their own food and be totally sustainable. Um, so that is, is some of the entries from the from 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 the challenge, um, which we say we're showcasing at the moment, and hopefully we'll get round to these um, final presentations uh, eventually. Um, uh, the other thing we're running at the moment, uh, just very briefly, um, is uh, a challenge really aimed at young families. Um, a love home design challenge. Really, it is. It's running for another few, a couple of weeks, a few weeks. Um, trying to engage young, younger people probably and their families whilst they're all stuck at home, isolated at home, um, thinking about their homes. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge to think how they can improve them and how they are, how they're coping with their families and people of all ages and, and all the rest of it. Um, so it's, it's a challenge going on at the moment. And again, um, we're, we're, we're going to um, highlight some of the ideas that come in on our various um, on our various websites. And while some of the youngest um, primary schools are going back to school now, um, some of them are engaging on, on having a look at this this challenge. So again, it's on our website. If, um, if any of you or your your families may may be interested in that, so that very much is what Moby are doing. Apart from um, courses um, and, and education, obviously George and our design team are, are actually designing houses. Um, and just very very quickly, you run through some of the the fab houses which um, George and um, Owen Jones, our, our designer, developed in conjunction um, with Places for People and Urban Splash. And the first of these were, were built up in on the Tyne North Shields. Um, and uh, you know, they are a modular off-site man manufactured homes, um, incredibly high quality finish. Um, Built um, in, obviously in, in in a factory or basically around a, a kind of container kind of shape, so it's easily transportable. Um, but the idea was to demonstrate that you can create affordable homes that are beautiful with a very very high quality um, finish uh, <coughs> and transported to site. 
Um, and Urban Splash, who we kind of work with, in fact, they're working with us on the Trailblazer for um, the Level 7 MSC, um, just recently done a kind of sizable deal with Sekasui, <coughs> Sekasui who are um, probably the biggest house builders in, in Japan, um, uh, a multi-million pound investment to boost, to boost the UK housing market, so it's very exciting what's going to be happening with them and, and Urban Splash. <coughs> Um, now, um, last year the, with the CITB, we realised that um, going forward with um, going going forward with um, uh, training uh, and, and courses in, in, in engaging off-site manufacturer, modern methods of construction, um, a lot of colleges. Um, were great at teaching traditional methods of construction, traditional courses, construction, built environment, the Pearson, the Pearson courses, um, but in many ways they weren't quite ready for um, in delivering units around modern methods of construction, off-site ready, you know, BIM, um, and all this kind of stuff was all a bit new, digital technologies, um, and probably because a, a, quite a lot of stuff <clears throat> probably had, had a trade background and, and with the way colleges and uh, work at the moment, they're missing a great deal of time for um, staff development or to develop um, teaching. So in many ways, perhaps they were a little bit reluctant to engage in um, delivering these new methods on new, our new courses. So the CITB funded a project uh, called Offsite Ready. Um, Train the Trainers program really was to develop training materials, modules and materials to help trainers, um, whether they're in industry as industry trainers or whether they are in, um, <coughs> in colleges and universities. Um, and the, the, they funded a project with partners really kind of led by the construction um, Scotland, Construct Scotland Innovation Centre, um, Edinburgh Napier University, uh, City of Glasgow College, um, Moby, class of your own, um, to develop a, a load of materials um, and really um, as I just said, really, the Office at Ready project aims to develop knowledge and skills and modern methods of construction. Opportunity for those delivering courses um, in construction of their environment, um, as well as industry training. Um, and it's it's ongoing. This it's it, it's not finished yet. And in fact, the um, the modules and materials are being added to all the time. But really, it's incredibly exciting um, opportunity uh, facility in that the materials, the modules that are available are. Uh, offsiteready.com um, is is phenomenal. Um, it's it's totally free to download, so any anybody can go on and download the materials, download the um, download the materials, download the. Uh, um, the, the, the modules um, on the website, um, there's a load of stuff and I, I'll go through them very quickly, but uh, apart from the training materials themselves, um, there's seven modules, I think at the moment, um, fundamentals, digital design, estimating and commercial. Each one of these has a whole load of PowerPoint slides um, to help you um, deliver a course. Um, in, in, so if you're <coughs> delivering um, one of our HNCs or something like that, there's enough material here to keep you going all year. Um, loads and loads of slides. Um, there's booklets to help you teach with ideas around um, how you could deliver a lesson, lesson plans, a, a short student projects, um, ass assignments, um, all the rest of it. Phenomenal amount of material, incredible facilities, well worth checking up. Um, and as I say, under the teaching support system, um, there's um, booklets about how you can deliver the courses, uh, ideas for a class, ideas for class, um, and let's move that box out of the way. Um, and loads and loads and loads of kind of videos to su support it. Phenomenal amount of material, design project briefs, assignment briefs. Um, incredible amount of material available here um, for anybody who is, de is delivering training in, in any manner of means. And I say this is um, it, it, it's readily and freely uh, available. Um, so that's at offsiteready.com. Um, the training materials at the moment, there's, 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 there's seven modules, or as I say, all with these um, 
PowerPoint slides, I think offsite fundamentals, we've got about 75 slides on it. Um, offsite manufacture, placement assembly with videos, links to industry, and there's also three other um, modules there which we've developed, Moby's developed, um, which are slightly different. Um, uh, and they're they're waiting to go up on the website when they're fully fully developed. Um, and the teaching support system, which is videos and booklets with lesson plans, lecture notes, group questions. Um, phenomenal, incredible facility. Um, the, the three modules that Moby have developed, processes, materials, and environmental issues, space and space, first one like that. If there's time at the end of this, we'll have looked through those. So very, very quickly, um, the offsite fundamentals. There's a tremendous number of slides. Um, we'll go through some of these very, very quickly. Um, but each one is then backed up. So you, anybody delivering this materials could use these PowerPoint slides. Um, it, it, it's backed up in the booklet with ideas and notes of how you'd expand it and, and develop the lesson. There's some stuff on the history of offsite, um, which is really quite interesting, really, because we keep talking about offsite manufacturing, something which is new. Uh, <coughs> it's not, it goes way back to the Middle Ages, whereby um, you know, crook frames, um, carpenters, joiners would often assemble the frames in their yards, in their building yards, to make sure they all fitted together and it worked. Um, they then took them down and assembled to them site to talk to the site and then reassemble them. So um, again, a very early kind of customer satisfaction when they were, were developed to, to, in, to, you know, to deliver to the site and assembled, you know, the, the, the builder knew that they were going to work. So it goes right back to the Middle Ages, um, then the 19th century uh, with balloon frames and um, platform frames, um, some stuff about early concrete slabs and panels. Interesting, similar sort of reaction to the meeting today, really some of these, um, uh, Recast concrete panels and things that came from to start with were were um, opposed by the trade unions and that they thought it would do away with the trades. There would be a lot of people would lose their jobs in the construction industry if we had too many of these prefabricated homes. Um, so anyway, there's a whole load of section on. Um, on the history, which is interesting for, for students and trainees, uh, we talk about modern methods of construction. Um, it expands on on the efficiency, business efficiency of adopting modern methods, um, the quality, how you can ensure the quality, um, obviously customer satisfaction, getting away from all this snagging that we get with modern homes and all the rest of it, environmental performance, sustainability, and the predictability of delivery. Um, and to say all these things here are, are, are expanded with, you know, to explain to the students and the trainees what is involved um, and how you could uh, spit it into the groups to come up with ideas for, for delivery. Um, some stuff on the various terminologies of offsite, some of the offsite manufacturing, modern methods, industrialized building systems, so on and so forth. Um, some stuff on flying factories, a good example of, of a flying factory. Again, the, the site I mentioned earlier, the fab houses at North, Shield, at North Shields in the time, um, the, the smoke houses, the flying factory there was set up to, to help complete them. Um, Quite an interesting kind of section on modern methods of construction and off-site construction, um, how they kind of in, in, interact. You've got modern, me modern methods of construction, um, looking at additive manufacture, which is basically 3D printing, um, trad you know, traditional building product, which is led by efficiency improvement and site process led by efficiency improvement. Um, Pre-manufacturing, you know, the 2D structures, panel systems, non-structural assemblies and, and then 3D kind of um, assemblies. So that you can see how there is a, a degree of overlap between off-site manufacture and um, modern, modern methods of, of construction. Um, a, a lot of stuff to explain how uh, how off-site construction works, panelized systems, uh, <coughs> basically stud walls in many ways, panelized systems, volumetric systems, then the sub-assemblies, girders and beams, hybrid systems. Um, it goes on to explain exactly what they are um, with really good examples, um, videos and so on and so forth. Um, how volumetric systems, um, there's a load of stuff on um, the challenges and risks, not not everybody um, engage, engages with this. Uh, some people are still worried about it. And it talks about the risks and challenges that you're going to uh, you're, go you're going to face, how you can overcome them. Um, different sorts of <clears throat> residential building types. 
um, and the different systems that might be appropriate um, might be appropriate um, for the different methods. Some really good examples of um, how offsite has 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 worked um, from some of the uh, materials such as this, which is a modular system, a bit like the Ilka home in many ways. But once it's um, assembled on site, you will know that it was a, a modular system. Um, timber and um, timber is obviously big in Scotland and the tallest timber um, and some very very um, exciting new developments at, at London Canary Wharf again off-site manufactured um, it is some stuff they're not it's all about residential and all about homes it deals with non-residential um, places as well I mean you could argue probably that prisons are residential but um, yeah it looks at hospitals and education facilities again lots of different examples of how it can be employed um, retrofitting how it can be be used in, in retrofitting um, infrastructure with bridges and roads. Um, again, the methods of, uh, of how it can work, the concepts, um, design considerations, uh, what you need to do if you're facing, um, if you're going to be entering a project, an offsite, a modern methods offsite project um, the design decisions all have to be front loaded you can't as a traditional building start building the foundations and the uh, and the superstructure while you're still designing the roof for the uh, interiors um, it does need to be front loaded um, and thinking about sizes and dimensional tolerances if if somebody else is preparing the foundations in the site and your building is going to come and be delivered on a crane and drop into the site the dimensions and tolerances are so critical um, transportation problems, any kind of site restrictions. So there's something for everybody. It covers all kind of um, aspects of the uh, of, of the whole industry. Um, there's a load of stuff on different materials. Um, the advantage is it's quite a nice traffic light system. The green light for steel, what is particularly good about steel, some of the warnings that problems with steel um, and some of the, the real concerns, the red light. Um, again, with, with, with concrete, a traffic light system, um, and again, and, and again with, with timber. Um, the Moby modules, um, again, we developed with Pearson. We've got these four units, off-site manufacturing, um, housing industry, and we've, um, as I said, we've kind of mapped them with these seven units, seven modules. Um, are you just map, map with them so as, as I say anybody who wants to um, in, a, in a college or, or whatever is, is, is wanting to deliver and a little bit concerned about oh you know how am I going to prepare all this material and deliver all these lessons and <clears throat> set assignments it's all there you know every, everything is, is, is covered so really you know, it, it's um, you don't need to spend an awful lot of time preparing lessons likewise with our HNC future homes design and construction um, are you, these are our units, housing design specification, principles of offsite, principles of housing, um, and they kind of mapped um, with the with these uh, with these units materials. So again, it's, it, there's, there's there's something for everybody there. Um, the Moby offsite modules are looking at are slightly different, and these are kind of still to be developed for the for the website, but they're there anyway. Um, looking at um, different processes and different materials um, that could be, could be used. So as I say, our three units, so materials, processes, environmental issues, spaces and places, and first rung on the ladder. Um, this is really taking traditional materials, such as plastics, steel, um, timber, um, and it's a unit where we're looking at non-traditional use of these materials, you know, how we can develop polymers and resins and plastics, um, how we can take steel and aluminium pressing from flexible sheets, a bit like they build cars and trucks. We did have a conversation with Nissan and I believe um, Jaguar Land Rover as well about um, the way they build cars and could their presses um, could they actually be used for making house components? And both Jaguar and Nissan were actually quite interested to, to talk about that. So it's a different use of traditional materials, timber composites, um, new approaches to bricks and cement, you know, bricks are the size they are, blocks are the size they are, just really for the bricklayer. So he can ergonomically, or he or she can, can hold them and carry them. Um, but if, if the future is robotics and robot robots going to build, then we can change the size and shapes. So it's, it's a kind of a bit of an alternative kind of unit, a, mo a module. Repurposing product, um, products and materials, 
Um, and again, these units include class projects, assignments, and we've also got a list of, um, a regionalized list, so if you're developing this in the northwest or the southeast, um, of companies that will be interested in arranging a factory visit, maybe coming to um, visit the, your establishment and giving a lecture, um, and some supplying materials. Um, Space and place. It's really about. Uh, it's a really a design project about um, changing needs of housing as we go through life um, and developing hostile land, contaminated land, land that's um, possibly you know, at risk of flooding. Um, this sort of thing. So again, and, and the first rung on the ladder is very much looking at um, how we can make homes more affordable for young people to get into them. Um, and a very long time. Uh, some time back now, the, rigid, uh, the earlier um, kind of image, um, we would love to have a Moby kind of centre, the International Centre of Construction Excellence, um, and they kind of they actually developed some quite detailed designs for a, for a Moby HQ, if you like. Um, but we're looking at a kind of a really exciting open plan area where you know you've got uh, the higher education, you've got lecture theatres, workshops, CAD facilities, you've got drop-in centres where people can just drop by, kids can come in. Um, you know, this is kind of the way we hope to be eventually. So there we are. I think I've just gone over my R. So thank you very much. Um, I hope that was I hope that was informative. Um, so there we are. Thank you very much for attending. Um, and if you want to ask any questions. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let me just put my screen back up. There we go. So um, in terms of questions, we've not had any sent through just yet. Um, oh, so I think right. what we'll do. <laughs> What we'll do is if um, anyone does have any, they can send them through to me and then um, I'll drop them over to you in an email. Um, yeah, sure. So just a few things to mention quickly while everyone is still logged in. Um, if you haven't already noticed, um, CABE have joined up with the Fire Risk Consultancy Limited to offer a range of online fire safety training. Um, so all of that is now on our website. Um, it's under the training and events tab and called CABE eLearning. So if it sounds of interest, um, please go and have a look. Also, the CABE community app is now live. Um, so if you haven't already seen it, um, please, you can log into your account through the website um, just to have a look around or you can now download the app. Um, all information on that is also available on the website. Um, so I just want to thank Jerry and everyone who has um, joined us this morning. Uh, just to remind you that the session will be uploaded to our YouTube channel later on today. If there's anyone that's viewed the session um, who thinks it'd be a benefit to a colleague, um, please do share it with them and then they can catch up at their own time. Um, our next webinar is on the 15th of July, and that is um, titled Dispute Resolution and Avoidance in Construction Contracts. And that is with Michael Gerard um, of Michael Gerard Solicitors. If you have any feedback on our webinars or any sessions you'd like to see us cover or you think you can do one yourself, please do get in touch. We're always looking to work closer with our members. Um, so with that, I will wrap up. Thank you again, everyone, for your time this morning, and hopefully I'll see you all online next month.